Australians are getting very tired of the Albanese Labor government, says National Senator Bridget McKenzie, according to Sky News. Well, blow me over with a feather. That is big news. Hold the presses. Bridget was also on ABC this week, trying to wakeboard off the Paris Olympics hype to suggest that lovely green alternative nuclear. Look, said Bridget, they have it in Paris. She didn't mention that France got into nuclear energy at the time of the Melbourne Olympics. Yes, it was 1956, four or five decades before solar was invented or wind. And yes, there is still no costing for this coalition non-policy policy, but oh, lamented Bridget, how those nasty, nasty people were poking fun at us for our nuclear policy. Now, we wouldn't deign to award the scam of the week this noble prize to Bridget, although her sports rorts, abuse of power and public money is certainly worthy. It's a tad ancient now. And of course, Australia's pro-corruption commission, the NAC, won't be touching it. It's too corrupt. Won't be touching anything corrupt. But we do have good old Rupert Murdoch scamming not only the world, but also his own children this week. We've got the plunge in the fertility rate, which amazingly, Peter Dutton didn't blame on Labor. Well done, Peter. We've got PWC doing PWC stuff. The things that they do, these people. And we've got Resources Minister Madeline King forking out a bunch of new fossil fuel exploration licenses for multinational tax dodgers. And we've got, finally, <sighs> tax reform. Andrew Lee's tax reform. Labor's much promised, much vaunted tax reforms to capture a few extra pennies from the multinationals. It may actually happen. But cockroaches. What do cockroaches have to do with that? Well, one of our spies at the Senate hearing into Andrew Lee's reforms tells us that the business lobby put up a small family company to cry poor about the impending multinational tax legislation. It was called SC Johnson. SC Johnson, you may not know this. We certainly didn't. These are the guys who make Windex, the stuff you spray on your windows and wipe it down. They make rage. The cockroach stuff, the cockroach baits, and also duck, the blue coloured stuff you put in the toilet in a plastic sachet to clean your toilet consumer products. Well, their man in Canberra, their man from America, from Ohio in Canberra, told the senators this week that the sky would fall in and the world would end if these modest tax measures were brought in. The usual stuff, jobs, sovereign risk, prices. Our man in Canberra, Jason Ward, quickly sallied forth to the ASIC database to find out just how small and impoverished this tiny company SC Johnson was. Because SC Johnson had told the gathering that Australia was just 1% of global revenue. Prices would have to go up and jobs were at stake. The usual business crybaby spiel. However, if the 76 million, Jason found, in the accounts that they made in revenue here was in fact 1% of their global revenue, then their global revenues were 7.6 billion. Not too small. And they pay barely any tax anyway, according to their statutory filings. So the guy was really overdoing it on the duck, on the Windex spray and wipe. But Rupert, oh, Rupert. Now, you wouldn't know it from The Australian, which is making a lot of noise this week, celebrating its 60-year anniversary. The National Broadsheet, we used to work there for eight years, in fact. You know, there's pics of Lachlan and Peter Dutton and Albo and all the pol political royalty there celebrating the 60 years of The Australian. Splashed across the papers today with pics of Lachlan. Enjoying the revelry they were and the story page one splash said well it had Lachlan there making an impassioned plea to we quote real journalism he appears to believe what he says Lachlan and why wouldn't he having spent a life getting in and out of limos and facing daredevil risks such as the possibility of spilling red wine jus on his silk tie he is totally in touch 
with the common man. Anyway, as Rupert is still plotting at age 93 to keep the right-wing nutjob routine going to make old white men more angry and fight the eternal battle against that great enemy, woke and wokeness. He's trying to fiddle the family trust. He's trying to control the kids beyond the grave. The family trust, which is irrevocable. Irrevocable it is, apparently. Or maybe irrevocable just isn't as irrevocable as it used to be. This irrevocable family trust was struck with his second wife, Anna, wife to three of the kids. According to the New York Times, and we hope their coverage is more reliable than their coverage of Gaza, in late November 2023, according to a sealed Nevada court document acquired by the Times, Rupert's lawyers filed a petition in Reno to change the irrevocable voting rules to give Lachlan Murdoch majority control of Cruden Financial Services. This is the trustee of the Murdoch Family Trust. It's where the gold is held. It's where it holds. The Murdoch family holds the Murdoch fortunes. It's US 15 billion of Disney stock, Fox stock, and News Corp stock. And Rupert wants to bequeath to Lachlan sole control of the family's investments in Fox, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Post, the Australian telly, the Hun, all the other assets which shape world opinion against wokeness, including the Sun and the Sunday and the Times in the UK. He's scamming good old Rupert at 93, scamming the kids and the ex-wives as well as the rest of the world elsewhere. It emerged the PwC boss, Kevin Burrows, the crisis manager, was, or we, we know this thanks to the indefatigable Barbara Pocock, Senator Barbara Pocock. Kevin is actually paid $4.4 million, not $2.2 million, as previously advised. Crisis management is a rich profession. And yes, PwC and Rupert's editorial pages were whining about proposals that partnerships be limited to 100 partners, not 1,000. The point being that the big four, EY, Deloitte, KPMG and PwC, are partnerships. And why are they partnerships? Because partnerships, unlike corporations, are secret. You don't have to disclose anything. You don't have to file public financial statements. It's a scam. It's a secrecy scam. And they love secrecy, like the cockroaches of the tax profession. And there, also this week, was our Resources Minister, Madeline King. This is her portfolio, looking after resources. She's not the Environment Minister to give her her due. But against the advice of the IEA, which has always been funded by coal, and all other reputable international bodies, which say we should have no new fossil fuel projects, here was Madeline blithely opening up, furtively as well. Didn't make much of a fuss about this little old announcement. A whole lot of new exploration territory she opened up for tax dodgers such as Exxon and Chevron and Santos. Another 10 CCS projects, that's carbon capture and storage, where they say that we can capture the toxic emissions and they won't go into the atmosphere and create global warming. Only problem with CCS is that it doesn't work. It's just a scam. And a lot of it's funded by public subsidies too. Over at Nine Entertainment, meanwhile, which like News Corporation is madly shedding jobs, sacking real journalists, keeping their talent, that's their talking heads on, but sacking the actual journalists. Well, one of the Nine executives is running the Torch Relay in Paris. They were reporting at the SMH and Age, a baby recession Yes, the number of births in New South Wales has registered the biggest decline since the early 1980s as housing affordability and cost of living pressures discourage people from having children. There were 92,200 babies born across the state in 2023, down by 6,300 babies, or 6.4% compared with the previous year, the baby recession. This was the biggest percentage decline since 1983. Statistically, it is a real thing. Since 1983, when Australia was recovering from a deep recession. And on social media, there they were. They were busy speculating that the drop in babies might have been due to the COVID vaccine mandates. But we have to hand it 
to Peter Dutton and Susan Lee and Bridget and Rupert's mob who did not blame Albo or immigrants or Hamas for the failure of Australians to not have more babies. But Scam of the Week must go to Rupert, who will indubitably be scamming until the grave. We awarded to Rupert this majestic gong for dudding his own children in order to keep the right-wing nut jobbery going ad infinitum. Please like, share and comment in the space below. Throws a few bucks on Patreon if you can afford it.